Hello. Day two, probably hard to read. From uh, Starbucks. Maybe uh, you can sort of see the, uh, where I am there. I'm actually sitting outside in the, in the rain. And, uh, trying to set the phone up here. Uh, on the wet tabletop. And actually leaning it on the coffee cup. And uh, the light seems to be fading. Sitting on a very wet chair. Getting the chill in me. Push meditation. A lot of people chill out. Don't know if that's what they mean. Uh, next to uh, kind of two main State Route 79 and US Route 1 here. Um, and it's fairly well trafficked. Um, a little plaza here, so it may get loud. But Starbucks yesterday, Starbucks today. I was told that it's, um, uh, I don't know if this is going to be legible or not. I was told that it, uh, I'll try and hold it this way, let's see if the, uh, be her meow. I was told that it was, um, National Cat Day or something like that. No idea how true that is. Uh, try and bundle up a little bit. This is actually a moisture wicking sweatshirt. So kind of functions as a uh, raincoat. So I'm probably a little drier than I look. Somebody wheeling a wheeling a trash can on the pavement. First concrete behind me. I have no idea how true the cat thing is. It's uh, something I saw on the internet, I think. But it's still, I'm in mind of it. And now I'm opting to sit outside in the rain. There's a bunch of people indoors, warm, sitting in comfortable chairs, dry. Uh, and there's room for me. But I did that yesterday when I was thinking about cats. When we think about cats, we tend to think about an aversion to water. That starts to think, get me thinking about <clears throat> cravings and aversions. Yesterday, Starbucks, we were talking about cravings. So maybe we're talking about aversions here. So one of the um, sort of early trip ups that happened to somebody <clears throat> studying meditation, mindfulness, Buddhism, this sort of thing, and to say, oh, you know, I've lived enough of a life, however much that is, but for them enough, to know that the phrase life is suffering resonates. That sounds like some kind of truth. So, well, what's, uh, what's Buddhism have to say about that? And Buddhism says that. Then it follows that up with, there's a cause for these sufferings. Now you have my interest. What's the cause? Of course, in the early going, I think most people tend to think that the cause is external. What's the cause? Like, who is to blame? Oh, I always knew it was my stepfather. I always knew it was uh, poverty. I always knew that uh, it was my boss. I always knew that it was my ex-spouse. I always knew that it was uh, the weather. But Buddhism, if you are to ask, says in the very early goings, life is suffering. Of course, we can say that 
in a much more <clears throat> helpful way, much more scholarly way, but that's the commonly translated way, not my teaching. Life is suffering. Followed by there's a cause to that suffering. Followed by the cause to that suffering is attachment. Attachment to desires. Cool. Okay. So how do I do that? <clears throat> what book do I buy? What hat do I wear? What colors do I wear? How do I cut my hair? Which church do I go to? Just don't be attached to my desires. <clears throat> and so that first trip up that I mentioned is often right here. People here life is suffering, there's a cause of the sufferings. That cause is an attachment to desires. And then what happens? <gasps> Where do I get that? What book do I read? Whose feet do I kiss? How do I pray? Where do I travel? Uh, what, what things do I throw out? What class do I attend? How do I stand? What type of yoga do I do? So, cause is described as an attachment to these desires. And what really quickly happens in the early going, very often, to many, 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 most people, is, oh, I want that. I want the solution to that. So their first trip up is to install a desire, maybe out of habit. Maybe it's the only tool in their toolbox. But they install a desire around this idea of no desires. And then they get attached to that. There's a craving about no longer having cravings. Something that happens quite often is well, you say, well, I've learned that mistake. I've seen other people make that mistake. I've made that mistake, perhaps. Well, now I don't want that. I don't want to want. I don't want to wear the special hat. I don't want to wear the particular vestments. I don't want to bow that way. I don't want to have a Buddha where I meditate. I don't want to travel to Kathmandu. They're very clearly kind of avoiding these things. But again, an early lesson in these studies it comes up in Buddhist studies quite often, quite early on. For many, 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 most people <coughs> is aversion the not wanting but aversion it soon comes to be understood is itself <coughs> excuse me a want an aversion is a want it's a wanting not something it's a wanting not someone it's a wanting not to be somewhere it's a not it's a wanting not to be in a certain way it's a wanting not to be in somebody's presence. It's a wanting not to eat that food. It's a wanting not to look that way, to wear that way, to speak that language, to talk to that person, to eat that food, to whatever. <coughs> so aversion is want. It's a wanting not to have, do, be, eat something. As such, aversion is at risk to the same attachment as desire because aversion is desire it's not wanting something it's wanting not to have something be something eat something wear something explore something taste something embrace something be near something be away from something and so i had cats on my mind because i guess we're celebrating National or World Cat Day or something. And then I pulled up here in this you know, pretty good, you know, rainstorm, downpour. And there's hot coffee inside, although I got steamed milk, but same idea. A hot drink inside. Comfortable chairs, relatively quiet, people chatting comfortably, amiably, nicely lit, uh, warmed air because uh, we're just turning seasons here so the places have their heat on. Dry, <laughs> quieter than the traffic. And I looked out here, and there's, to my mind, a bunch of very lonely chairs, uh, you know, dripping, uh, puddling. I'm actually sort of standing, or my feet, I guess I could say, are in a puddle. I'm sitting, but I'm, 
and uh, a bunch of seemingly kind of lonely chairs. Which maybe just not so long ago were filled with people in the sunshine. And that made me think of cats in the context of their notable or purported aversion to water. And I thought, I think I'll just sit in a puddle with my feet in a puddle in the rain. Knowing that the thing that I want, the things that I want, I, I say thing meaning that set of things, you know, the, the indoor Starbucks experience. Knowing that that's right there. And so I'm trying to embrace the aversion, to explore the aversion. Sit here. And this is something that we can do in our meditation practice. When you're in your repose, sitting, standing, walking, for example, laying down, perhaps, you may have aversions to things. So you may be resisting something that has not arrived. Because yesterday you coughed during your meditation, so you spend the time before you've coughed, whether or not you will, trying to avoid something that may come, may not come. <laughs> Another example, you may sneeze. So this is an example, maybe I'm about to sneeze again, they often come, a few. And I could just have in my head now, like, how do I avoid that? Or, or just even thinking, I don't want it putting stock or putting currency in the notion, I, I hope I don't, I don't want to, I know I don't want to. And then maybe getting attached to that, which quickly draws me out of the moment. And so the question to you is, when you watch this and you're trying to meditate, what are you averse to? Can you begin to recognize that that aversion is the same as a desire. It is a desire. Not even the same as. It, it is the same as desire. It, it is two words for the same thing. And they both are at risk for attachment. And so as you sit, stand, lean, walk, not lean, walk or lay down. What are you attached to? By the way, you may hear church bells. I, I can I can hear them, but I, I know there's traffic. And a, a car dra dragging a tailpipe as well to uh, punctuate the sound. car with the tailpipe is just pulled in over here. I imagine they came off the highway and they pulled into the closest lot they could find. I imagine they're going to have to go out in the rain and see what's what. I can still hear the church bells. That's why I was trying to be quiet. Still church bells. It's 
playing the whole song. And so become aware of, perhaps tend to, the aversions as well as desires. Draw that into the framework of your practice. Often the desires and the aversions feel like you know two sides of a spectrum, you know, two sides of a house. And many people become quite on guard for their desires. It's it's a little bit like um, you know protecting the front door of your bank, uh, but you know leaving this unguarded, unprotected, unlocked. So you know if you're going to go to this trouble, pay attention to the desires. I think it stands to reason you recognize that these are also desires, and that your attentiveness to desires should be desire slash aversion. So I just think I'll, think I'll say thank you. <clears throat> now.